said, now look at your daughter. And the daughter got up and started dancing. And uh, he said he said to the mum, there's nothing wrong with your daughter. She's just a dancer. Take her to dance school. So when she went to dance school, she found a load of kids who were in a very similar position to her. They couldn't sit still, but they loved dancing. And it just so happened that that lady became uh, head of the um, uh, of the Royal op- of the Royal Ballet, um, and and is still on the board of directors. And if she hadn't been taken to ballet school, she'd have been labelled as stupid. So the the point to make is that is that uh, some people with ADHD come across as inexplicable underachievers because they simply can't concentrate unless they really love doing what they do because if you love something your dopamine goes up and you can concentrate again Um, and it's incredibly important to spot those type of people well i mean my daughter did really well at school um but she struggled to sit through a class um and was never really fulfilled sitting in the class and she chose not to go to university which it was against my wishes, but that was her choice. And however, she has started her own business, and she's she's doing actually pretty well. She picked up another client the other day, um, but but she did please me with something because she's almost thinking about going back because she actually realised, but she didn't realise because when she chose not to go to university she didn't know what she wanted to do and she didn't want to go and do something that wasn't going to serve her or go into debt doing something she didn't want to serve her in even worse but but it, and it probably took her a little bit longer because one thing she was is she's very good at is english so a lot of her work right now is doing product launching and copywriting and things like this so she actually has said to me actually about going and doing a going and studying journalism because she actually enjoys it, which is actually quite strange in some ways because she has got ADHD. So but being, if she enjoys it, it being, doesn't being, matter. Doing journalism, for example, or writing, is quite a lonely job, and she's actually it's clearly next to her. So it's, so I, 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 it's not that I probably, I, I probably have my um, mixed feelings in, actually, how good will she be at it? Because she's probably good at it, but her, personali- be but her personality... Is also going to be that. Will she be able to focus? No, she'll she'll be able to focus because she loves it. And remember, if you like something, that increases your pleasure neurotransmitter dopamine. And ADHD people are low in dopamine, so that's why they can hyper focus if they really like something. Mm. But um, it, she, if it's a solitary type of occupation, that's where she it, she won't do well because she won't be able to structure herself. She, she won't be able to organize herself. So she can, she can physically and intellectually do the concentration and the writing bit. But generally organizing herself will, will be very difficult for her. Well, unless and, and, unless and, there's someone and, and looking and, after and, her. And that's right. And I think that is probably going to be one of her challenges. And it probably is one of her challenges now in some ways. Um, because I said, do I actually have a template for this? Because, well, no, I don't actually. I just... Um, sometimes if you're too structured and and, and, and I probably actually have to agree with her sometimes if you're too structured and follow a template too to the point what happens is it doesn't it doesn't let any um, flair come out any sort of uniqueness come out because if you just follow the same thing constantly 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 it it prevents you from creating new things well that's right and and I and I actually and I actually understood that and for great success you need creativity and persistence which is very hard to find in the same person Absolutely, but but also someone who does have, let's say, ADHD. Um, I mean, you, you believe she has it. Um, you know, equals creativity, but then creative, creativity. creative people are less likely to be persistent. That's right, because because the thing is, their heads are going, they, they they very much get taken in very different directions, which mm-hmm. is why they never finish anything. So, uh, people with ADHD never finish anything. So, you need someone who's a finisher in your team. Who will actually be able to do that? You're so um, right, and, I, and I've seen uh, successful companies where you have it's run by people who have these different roles. So you have the ideas person, the good starter but poor finisher, and then you have the completer, like the chief operating officer. Really, yes, isn't but it? The, the, but the problem with with those types of partnerships is that sometimes they can get one can get resentful of the other. So the the the, the chief operating officer can be, become resentful of the ideas person who seems to be doing a lot less work so they, they can they can reach they can find strife that way but going back quickly to the royal family 
are you are you a royalist or you're not a royalist? Um, I am a royalist, actually. Yes. Uh, why? Um, why do you? Th- why is it important for, to have the royal family? Well, in a in a country that is losing its identity, uh, I think it's more important than ever to have the royal family because it gives us our identity. Yes. And if you actually think about the level of tourism we have, is because of a royal family. Um, Amazing, isn't it? That other people value them probably sometimes that, more right, than the English. And, you know, the Americans love it, and 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 the thing is, in some ways, because they don't have it. No, they don't. Um, because I mean, even the Americans talk about their, you know, and if you actually Google certain people mm. um, in America, they will, you know, their, their, their Wikipedia pages, for example, will always say they've got Europe, they've got German, English, Welsh, Irish ancestry. So you see that the, the important thing to understand is that the royal family are are a icon behind which to unite and they represent identity and they represent structure, they represent tradition, which is incredibly important in especially in a materialistic, politically correct world now, um, now, and that's why the royal family have benefited from a certain amount of protection and, and whatever they may have, may or may not have got up to has been, shall we say, shielded and cloaked, um, and in some ways, in some ways, you could argue the fact, and we're only saying it hypothetically, that that's okay, because we need s- something to look up to and to unite behind. I think it's quite. Th- there needs to be a little bit of humanity, so that people can also identify with them, but to to go over the top. And to start vilifying, I think, is is a very risky business. Look, the, um, look, the royal family also had to learn to move with the times. I mean, I think when... Um, I don't think. When um, Queen Elizabeth, you know, first became queen, I mean, mm. she was a young lady who had a... who, in effect, had a British empire, which slowly got... Er- <laughs> which... Mm. actually got eradicated very quickly you know, you know, and, and probably rightly so you know the only speech that the Queen writes there's only one speech that the Queen writes herself which is her Christmas message oh is that right and the the the, the constant theme behind all her speeches is the importance of family um, and therefore I, I must say that that um, Meghan and Harry not being with the Queen is a real. It shows a complete lack of understanding of duty. I, I, I think there's. I and think there's tradition. Yeah, I think there's friction there, and 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 I'll probably give. You, I'll give you my thoughts on that quickly. How long do we have left, by the way? So so just quickly. So in some ways, at the beginning, you probably think that Harry marrying Meghan was probably a stroke of genius from a PR point of view, and that's what it was—a PR point of view, because you because she will have no doubt have been vetted by the royal household. They will have been advised, like, okay, we've modernised. She's, um, she's, um, she's got she a foreigner of race. mixed yeah, race. Of, she's mixed race, rather. So she's mixed race, which is a good, a good addition to the royal family without being too, um, too out there in some ways. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, which is, I'm thinking this is how they would have probably said, and, and, and which is good. Um, she's American. And the thing is, if you think about American tourists that we actually get, because let's face it, and this is where the, this is why they're still around, because when people come to Buckingham Palace, they don't come to Buckingham Palace just to see the building. They come to Buckingham Palace and hope that they'll actually the Queen will be there, even if she's in the building. They will be they would be happy, you know. That's why they would come. So there's an extra selling point there. So, but the thing is, as a as a behavioural point of view, in terms of, did she really fit the role of a princess? I'm sure there's probably some question marks around that because there's conflict between Harry and William because of their of the relationships. Um, I think the Queen has had to intervene and, and, and tell Meghan how to c- certain presses on how she should behave and how she should treat people because I don't think she treats her the nannies or the, some of the staff very well. Um, and they're not having Christmas together, so it's. Um, the unity is is almost is almost being fragmented a little bit by Harry and Meghan. 
right y- now. If you think about it, it's it's. Um, I don't know if I've said that I'm, very I'm well. I'm trying actually. to I'm trying to put it kindly, but I th- it, it's basically a disgrace. You know, she thinks she can come and to to marry into a royal family and separate the son from the family. I think is is uh, is is. Uh, very dangerous, uh, and a very that's a very destructive influence. Uh, actually, if you actually look at her mum, her mother is far more eloquent than the father was. If you actually see the father, and there's a reason why he didn't come to the wedding. Now, you can speculate and say that he was sick, which is what was sent to the media. But I think it's more than that. And um, by the way, her half brothers and sisters have behaved. I mean, he obviously comes from a. A blue collar background as well, um, but the mother was. She, 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 in, in some ways, she's almost become. She's risen more to being the mother of a princess mm. than princess than Meghan has of being being a prince. Actually, a duchess, really. Let, let's say. But you see, it's important to to protect the image of the royal family. And for instance, there was that there's a a theory, a, a legend, that Jack the Ripper was was in fact a a member of the royal family, but protected by the police yeah. because the damage to the country would have been worse yeah. than than uh, than covering it up, as it as it were. Uh, but the the what's important to understand, therefore, is that the image and the role and the idea of the royal family must be preserved. But equally, a level of modernity so people can relate to them. Yeah, is but, al- but but yeah, but also, I don't think it's actually entirely Meghan's fault. By the way. She's been thrust into this environment. Um, And no matter how much preparation you actually have, there are going to be learning curves throughout the thing. Because she's she's gone from being an American actress with one successful TV show under her belt to all of a sudden being thrust in in almost the same way as Princess Diana was in some ways. And Princess Diana took a few years of crafting and grooming before she became the princess we, she became when she died. I mean, when you saw her as a 19-year-old, and admittedly she was only 19, she was naive, she was lacking confidence, she was... Um, you know, she, she, the way she dressed, the, her behaviour, her mannerisms. She wasn't a public speaker. And over time, she then became this... I've got to say, this woman who basically was one of the most popular people in the world. Because, in you know why? Her, but but because it took time. But the thing is, here, here's the thing. I think that changed when she became a mother because she was a nanny beforehand, remember? And as soon as she developed her purpose and she became fulfilled in that role, that's when she actually stepped into Mm. um, being the person that she was and she became more fulfilled. Yes, but let's not forget that... uh, But it took time. It didn't happen overnight. The provenance of one of her sons is is, uh, potentially in doubt, certainly, Uh, certainly visually. Um, okay. He, he, certainly, well, he looks. About James Hewitt. Uh, he looks well. The uh, okay, the, the, there's, there's, a, there's rumors about that. An exceptionally strong resemblance, shall we say? Um, but look, uh, yeah. But also look at her brother. He had reddish hair as well, though. Remember, her mm-hmm. brother, Lord Spencer. Well put. Well yeah, saved. So, so let's not, um, you know, <laughs> let's not go down the um, conspiracy theories here. Mm. Just in case, because we, we don't know. Nevertheless, but the the. the the, the interesting thing is that as as long as the the balance is correct in terms of in terms of people being able to relate to them, we can see the royals have their trials and tribulations, which they deal with, and indeed and indeed the ancient Greeks, part of the role of their gods, apart from being uh, icons behind which to unite, is that the gods themselves had their trials and tribulations, which reflected mankind's trials and tribulations, and similarly Greek tragedy was exactly that that you could see. Uh, how people dealt with with love, with murder, with lust, with jealousy and envy, um, because that is the human condition. Mm-hmm. Guys, I think we're running out of time here, and as much as we'd love to carry this conversation now going, and we could go on for another hour, to be honest, because there's so much we could talk about, we'd, we would just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year for the year ahead. And if you've got any questions, please uh, let us know. And if you've got any challenges, actually, please let us know, because both of us are qualified in very different ways to be able to answer any questions on that. Goodwill to all men. Be with your family and your close friends, and blessings upon you. Thank <laughs> you.
Let's say women as well for that one, just in case any PC people out there. But we know what we mean. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.